Hello everyone, my name's Tori James. I'm the president of Girl Guiding here in Wales and I'm also the first Welsh woman to climb Mount Everest. Now, when I think about adventure, I think of getting outside, I think of human powered journeys, I think of being part of a team and the camaraderie that comes with that. I think about testing yourself against the elements and the, and the physical challenge that comes with exploring new and different environments. There's one thing that, that I think is common to all adventurers, and that's a desire to step outside of your comfort zone. And it's when you step outside your comfort zone that you learn most about yourself. So how can you find your inner adventurer? I thought I'd share three ways with you um, to help you develop an adventurous mindset, and most importantly, that are going to get you outside over the coming weeks. Number one, complete your horizontal Everest. Like many challenges and adventures, getting to the summit of Mount Everest certainly isn't a straight route or a direct route. In fact, it's painfully slow. And the reason for that is because you have to ascend and descend the mountain several times before you actually attempt the summit, going from base camp up to camp one and back to base camp. Base camp, this time higher to camp two, and then back down to base camp. This is so you can acclimatise to the lack of oxygen on the mountain. And as an adventurer, the mental challenge is sometimes more than the physical challenge. And you have to accept that some days you'll be making progress towards your goals and other days there'll be setbacks and you'll be right back where you started. So for your next trip outside, think of a destination not too far from home, maybe your local park, and two memorable points en route to the park could be a, a, a junction, it could be a post box, it could be a beautiful tree, something like that. Your house is base camp and those memorable points are camps one and camp two, respectively. So you can't just go straight to the park. You've got to go from your home to camp one and then back to your home. Then you leave again and this time you go to camp two, your second memorable uh, point, and then you return to your house. And then finally, you can leave your house again and get to your destination and then come all the way home. Make sure you celebrate the little successes. So the milestones, the camp one and camp two, celebrate those and then give yourself a massive pat on the back when you finally have been to the park and you make it back home again. Number two, don't just look, see. Use your powers of observation. I think I go into the hills for the beautiful views that you get from the summit of mountains. But it's been in recent years that I've paid more attention to birds. My husband is a really keen bird watcher and he's shown me how fascinating it is to really stop and look at the detail that you get on birds in your local area. Powers of observation are really, really important. Often adventurers use them to keep safe. So for example, looking at very subtle changes in snow surfaces to detect a hidden crevasse or a, a frozen lake, for example, or looking at changes in the clouds that might signal uh, a change in the weather. So for this one, I want you to go outdoors and make the focus of your walk or journey to look at the birds, look at their colour, their markings, their size, shape, bird song, behaviour and flight pattern. And just take in what you're looking at. Identify them if you want to. But these powers of observation are really, really important. And actually, they can help us switch off and step away from some of the distractions that we might have in our life. And ultimately, they're going to bring us just a little bit closer to nature. My third suggestion for you is going to be called the early bird catches the worm. So all you early risers out there, this is probably one for you. And those of you that like your sleep aren't going to thank me for this one. But one of the things that's been common to my expeditions is seeing the sun rise. There is just something magical about being up and awake and to witness this. And one of my earliest experiences is when I was a guide and I travelled to our chalet in Switzerland and a small group of us were able to climb a local peak for the sunrise. It's an experience that stuck with me and, and I'm sure uh, was one of the things that made me fall in love with the mountains in the way that I have done. 
And it was the same on Everest. You know, you leave for the summit of Everest at about 9 p.m. at night and you climb through the night in the darkness to aim to reach the summit in the early hours of the morning. And so you're climbing and you're seeing the sun come out around you uh, across the Himalayas. It's just truly uh, spectacular. So for this one, find yourself uh, a local viewpoint, uh, check the weather forecast, set those alarms, make a hot flask to take with you, uh, persuade somebody else to come along as well and go and see the sun rise. Seeing the sunrise has got to be on one of your list of things to do. So good luck and let me know how you get on.